and welcome to Heidi's Fish Tank. I recently did a video all about Beta Care 101. I will try to remember to link it down below. Um, and it was getting really long. So I decided to go ahead and talk about tank mates for betas in a whole separate video because I feel like there's a lot of misinformation out there about betas and tank mates. So I'm going to be talking from my own research and from my own personal experience. Um, and if you'd like to check out the Beta 101 video, I will link it down below. This has been my personal experience with uh, betas and tank mates. They say that betas are somewhat aggressive and so you shouldn't keep them with other fish because they will kill the other fish. That's what they often say. Well, it is true that betas, specifically male betas, are very aggressive and have been selectively bred over time to be fighting fish, which is why they are also sometimes referred to as Siamese fighting fish, and betas, particularly male betas, are very prone to killing other male betas, so they should not be housed together. Um, in my experience, I have never had the beta be the problem when I have tried to put a beta in a community tank. Um, in fact, I actually recently had a Cory from Aquarium Co-op and Blazing Betas recommend that I put my beta into a community tank. He was in his own little three and a half gallon tank and he was biting his tail. And um, they recommended adding him to a community tank. I put him in a 20 gallon long community tank with lots of plants and lots of other fish. And he was a perfect gentleman. I never so much as saw him flare, which is when betas will lift their like neck to look more intimidating, at anything in that tank. Putting him in that tank gave him lots more things to chase, gave him lots more things to look at. They are kind of intelligent fish, and so they need a lot of things going on or they get bored, which is how my beta was chasing its tail and biting it and damaging itself. In my experience, Putting a beta in a community tank, the only problem that I have ever had has been other fish. That being said, every fish is different, they all have personalities, there are exceptions to every rule, and I am only speaking from personal experience here. So I'm, I can already see people in the comments saying my beta could not be with other fish, and that's fine. What I will say is that I had tried to put that same beta in a 10 gallon tank with only three tank mates and it was not as heavily planted and it was the first time I had ever had problems with a beta in a community tank. So I think there is something to be said for the lar larger footprint that is a 20 gallon long. My other experiences with keeping betas with tank mates has always been in a 29 which is the same footprint as a 20 gallon long. So maybe the larger the tank the more successful you're going to be with tank mates. I have also heard it said that female betas do better with tank mates, which makes sense. Female betas are naturally less aggressive. Female betas can be housed together in what's called sororities. Um, with sororities though, it is a little bit more advanced. Personally, I would not do less than five females in a sorority because the more of them you have, the more they kind of spread out their aggression. It's kind of like cichlids. Um, and I would also want it to be very heavily, heavily planted. I personally don't feel comfortable doing a sorority just yet, but if you want to know more about sororities, there are some really great beta channels out there, and I will try to remember to link uh, Creative Pet Keeping down below because I know that she does a sorority. So female betas are going to be a little bit more tolerant of tank mates. If you have trouble with tank mates and your beta, you might want to try a female beta instead if that's what you want to do. Um, the other thing is when you are looking to buy your beta, look at how they behave in the cups. Um, and see if they are kind of flaring at everything and a little bit more aggressive or if they just kind of are pretty chill betas. The really important thing though when trying tank mates is to remember to have a backup plan. So if you put your beta in there and it is aggressive and you do have problems, be able to take your beta out immediately. Watch them and observe and don't try it without having a backup plan. The other thing that um, I have been told by my local fish store, um, and I've never tried it the other way around, so I don't have personal experience trying this, but I've always been told to add your beta in last, which makes sense. I know with saltwater fish, for example, you add your most aggressive fish in last because by then the more uh, docile fish have established their territories and there's less likely to be fighting. In terms of suggested tank mates, these are the ones that I have had really good success with. Harlequin Rasporas, 
neon or cardinal tetras have been great and that makes for a really nice colorful tank. Um, I've also had good success with Endlers. Now, according to the internet, you might want to be careful with Endlers. They do have long flowing fins, um, but I've had very good success with it. Um, a lot of people will tell you never to do betas with guppies because guppies have the long flowing fins. Basically, the thought process is guppies look like other betas, so in theory, a beta would be more aggressive towards the guppies. In my personal experience, and I have seen others like Creative Pet Keeping be successful with this, I've never had a beta be a problem with a guppy. I've never had a beta pick on a guppy. Um, in my experience, that has been some of my most peaceful pairings. Again though, as with all of these, if you want to try it, try it, but have a backup plan. So be able to remove the beta if it is a problem. Other tank mates that I've had success with are Cory Cats, Plecos. Those are really good fish to start with because they live at the bottom and it's a different swimming area. And I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, but I would not try tank mates with a beta in anything smaller than a 10 gallon. Um, I just wouldn't. That just sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. Now, I don't have personal experience with it, but I wouldn't want to do that. That's just not enough space to establish a proper territory. If you're going to do tank mates in something smaller, you would want stuff that isn't fish. So I've heard of people having very good success with snails, um, some, some success with shrimp. The thing about shrimp is pretty much anything will eat them if it can fit in their mouth. So you have to decide if you'll be heartbroken if a shrimp gets eaten, you know, maybe don't do that. But um, I've heard of some people having success with shrimp or African dwarf frogs in smaller systems like a five gallon or even like a smaller system than that with the snails. Um, but in my experience, these are the fish that have been problematic. It has never been the beta. It has always been fin nipping fish that pick on the beta. So larger bodied tetras like serpe tetras, uh, skirt tetras like black skirts, white skirts, uh, glowfish tetras, which are all the same fish, just different colorations. Um, and tiger barbs. Don't do tiger barbs. That's a huge disaster. I also have not had good experience with angelfish and betas. Betas. I always say betas. I'm sorry. That's what I've said my whole life. It's actually betta. Um, and all of that has been aggression from the other fish, not from betas. Um, oh, I've also had really good luck with platies, and I've heard of people having good luck with mollies, although mollies are not something that I've personally tried. That is a little bit of suggested tank mates, you know, stuff you could add in with your beta if you wanted to. But once again, just know that, you know, you're probably going to have more success with a female beta. You'll probably have more success if you add the beta at the end. And have a backup plan. If it's a problem, it's okay. Scoop your beta out and put it somewhere else. And you can put it somewhere else temporarily, too, until you've resolved whatever the issue is. Or plan on putting a divider in the tank. That works, too, if it does end up being a problem. I do want to add at the end here, don't do goldfish. Goldfish have different temperature requirements and they get very large. So even though goldfish are peaceful, they will fit anything in their mouth. And I have definitely heard stories of betas getting eaten by goldfish. Anyways, I hope that this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Let us know, have you had success keeping your beta with other tank mates? If so, let us know which tank mates have been successful. If you're new around here, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm going to put a beta playlist down below and um, some other videos as well. And if you hit the bell next to the subscribe button, you can be on the notification team um, and you will never, ever, ever miss a video from me. So anyways, I will talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.